Hello, everybody. I am Tom, and you are watching me play Celesta, Crown of the Magister. So, turns out that this episode... Uh, I don't know what I was doing here. I had my ma my microphone muted the entire time, so I have to do post-commentary for this. Which is fun. Clear skies, Chaplain Lark. You wanted to see me? Clear skies. Yes. Thank you for coming so fast. Remember that monastery near Koparan? The Timaru in ruins? Of course. Yes. There was a cemetery there. Chaplain Ardenfire, priest of Arun, would like to meet you about it. I shall go to him right away. Clear skies. Clear skies. Einar guard you all. So, this was the um, the graveyard we found when we found... Uh, what was her name? The Elven Mage Lady? I can't remember her name. I can only remember... She was like a the soul of Adrastia, or part of the soul of Adrastia. I can't actually remember what her name was. Uh, but it's where we found her, and above that uh, that kind of sealed off place where we found her was a, a graveyard full of all these people. And these people, um, turns out there was a priest there, and all these people died, and he like forsake, forsook his god and all that kind of stuff. So this is a, uh, a quest surrounding that. And I believe here I remember that I can fast travel up here. From memory. <laughs> yep, there we go. <laughs> I haven't done post-commentary in a long time, god damn. It's been a long ass time. Ah, here you are. Chaplain Delon Lark told us you'd like to talk. Many thanks for coming. It's about the Sunblaze Monastery. We're all ears. Scavengers said many tombs in the cemetery bore the name of the Darwaz family. And? Emton Darwaz ruled this monastery. He was a renowned prelate on Tirmar. The heads of the church searched for him for years. Then he was considered to be lost, either left on the home world or killed in the cataclysm. Now we know he was alive. He buried his brothers and family in the Badlands. Oh, a sad tale for sure. Worse, and one with the, that we knew already, because we kind of discovered it. I prayed for his soul. And Aaron sent me a sign. A sign? Chaplain Darwaz's soul never joined, Aaron. It is trapped. He might have cursed his own symbol. The souls of his brothers, too, wander somewhere in this land. Someone needs to go and cleanse their remains with holy water. Will that suffice? Not if M. Tan is indeed cursed. His soul is too angry. Then you'll need to reason with him. I imbued his symbol with Aaron's magic. Use it as proof. And if he doesn't listen to reason? Then, and only then, should you destroy him. We will do what is necessary. May Aaron's fire warm your heart. Clear skies. So Aaron isn't exactly a very... It's, he's a pretty good god, seemingly. Because this is one of his followers who forsook him. And he's, like, trying to bring him back in the fold. So essentially he can go to heaven, is my guess. Or whatever whatever realm that this guy happens to own that is similar to heaven, I suppose. Uh, but someone who forsook him and said, God damn you, you've taken... Or God damn you, I'm, I'm not going to follow you anymore. I've had to bury all of my people. I no longer believe in you. And now he's, like, cursed to stay as a ghost or a, some kind of undead. We don't really know yet. Um, but the god anyway decided to say, nah, that's, that's not okay, come back to the fold and I'll welcome you into, into the afterlife or whatever. So, Aaron, not a bad god, seemingly. We are then going to start the, uh, the next quest, which is apostasy. Uh, sorry, that is apostasy, and then we've got the law is the law. I don't know what I was saying when I was going through this, I can't remember. I recorded this a couple of days ago and I went to edit it and then realized when I was editing it that I needed to do both commentary. It's an unfortunate realization, I can tell you that much. Speaking of which, I'm going to check right now that my microphone isn't muted. It isn't. Fantastic. It's been a long time since I've accidentally muted my microphone for an entire recording. I can tell you that much for free. So, now we're starting the other quest, which is to speak to Stig, who it turns out is an old friend of Hunter. I do really like the way they make these quests, like, personal to one of your party members. It's really cool. Hey, Shorty. You in the army? 
Don't call me that. I'm a royal guard, you know. You? Really? The princess and all? Yeah. Those your friends? We are. How do you know each other? You didn't tell them? We were in the city guard together. And we both upgraded. Anyway, I need help. I think someone's rotten in the guard. That's reassuring. We have important <laughs> things to do, my Indeed. Hey, okay, Stig is my friend. Fine. I need to go. Meet me at the palace entrance when you have time. Sir, so, it's I really love the way that the game does this, where it like it takes particular side quests and it like tailors them to your characters or to your uh, to your party members. Um, it's interesting too as well. I wonder whether or not this quest is only in the game if you have someone with a soldier background. That actually could be a thing. I didn't really consider this when I was playing it live, but it's quite possible that putting someone in with the... Because we had a similar one with um, Sayola, right? A mage. Um, I think her background was an acolyte or something, so she was like a student of magic. And I'm pretty sure... She had a, yeah, she had a similar thing where she had like she talked to her master and we found the library for her or whatever. So I think there's like for every background they put in a quest, like a side quest that you can do with that particular character with that background. It's really cool. It's very D and I like it a lot. Hey Stig. Hey there. You ready? Sure. So, what can we do to help? I have four suspects. Here are their names and posts. It won't be easy. They mustn't know I suspect them. We'll check them out. No problem. Strike true. So, four suspects of people who are potentially dirty in his employ. And then we have to go and investigate each of them. So we have interrogate Corporal Dan, meet Private Garth, trick shield guard Tradson, and observe Private Roderick. Um, because this is post-commentary, the timing of this is kind of irritating, so I'm just going to sit here while I go through all of this. Um, I do actually read through each of these, but... I might cut that out of the actual video. So we have, Tradson is a city guard working in a joint operation with the Snow Alliance to provide protection to the embassy. Rumour has it that he has a small side business, try to find out what he is dealing. Then we have Meet Private Garth. Garth is a notorious drunk, find him at the Gravekeep's cast and don't tell him, and don't let him scold you, insist if need be. We have incorporate, uh, interrogate Corporal Dan. Corporal Dan works at the High Bridge. Stig has seen him furtively leaving his post. And then we have observe Private Roderick. Private Roderick is posted at the entrance of the Temple Quarter. He takes frequent breaks, but not with his colleagues. Find out what he does when he is not at his post. This is me just looking through the map and finding each of them. There is actually something they changed about the map, which is quite nice, which I'll go into after this conversation, probably. Clear skies. I know you. You're the Sorak killers. Anything you want to share off the books? What? A little business of yours? Oh, 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 sure, sure. Not here, though. Meet me at the promontory tonight. So he's got some kind of side hustle. We don't know what it is precisely, but seems to be doing something. Um, but as I was saying, they've changed the map slightly so that you can actually go over terrain. You used to have to follow paths. So if there wasn't a path that you could take, then the map wouldn't go up there. So you see me like kind of going along the map where the bridges are because that's what I'm used to doing. But in an update, they've fixed it so you can just like move straight here to the promenade, which is quite nice. I like it a lot. It's a much better change. Moving on to Private Garth and we see <laughs> Hunter do the most ridiculous move ever because he can walk on walls. So he does. Clear skies. This is my seat. I always sit here. What? He's a drunk. We have to talk to Gareth or Garth again. Gareth? Is Gareth? 
can we talk? You're a strange bunch, you know that. Even stranger than that Arwen Merton. Fair enough. <laughs> it kind of is fair enough. We are a weird lot. It did say be persistent, though, so... Or insistent? Whatever. Same word, pretty much. Are you going to say something? You it! You council pawns are fake. Killed Sorax. Right. And I've got a dragon in my pocket. Now you're pissing me off. Well, I'm not sure he's smart enough to be corrupt. Think he can work? <laughs> he can barely stand. Let's go and see then. So we can go follow him and see what he actually ends up doing. This is me searching for him, I think. Yeah, there we go. That is what I'm doing. He's in the Sunblaze Court. I'm just bad at seeing. I've moused over him a few times now. Oh, actually, no. This is me gushing over the change to the camera where you can move it freely. So you're used to that path I just took there where you have to, like, follow the, uh, the, uh, stairs is what I was talking about. You used to have to, like, follow the stairs up there to get to the top. Now you can just move it freely. And they did that in a relatively recent update because it, it, it was... Not that long ago that I couldn't do that, so I'm really glad about that change. It is a fantastic change, and it's a problem that was kind of annoying. It's actually, interestingly, it's this very similar problem that Dragon Age Inquisition had, whereas, like, the top-down camera, like, pause and play mechanic in Dragon Age Inquisition was stupid because you could only follow certain paths. It was really dumb. What's he doing? Hijacking a crate from a delivery. Let's see what's in it. Flowers? Angry violets. Hundreds of them. Oi! What are you doing? I decided to not directly confront him here. The question which is, is why I went Cole Gal's option. My which job? is a better option, in my mind. What did you think I was doing? Why did you pick this crate out of the delivery? Oh, this one. Huh. Let me think. This is for Her Royal Highness going through Captain Ironshell directly. Oh, I'm sure the princess will appreciate you ravaging her personal stuff. As everyone knows, everything for her personal use is tax free. I knew that. Ask the captain. Go right ahead. That won't be necessary. Carry on. So he isn't corrupt, he's just kind of an asshole. Also interesting that everything that the monarchy imports is tax-free. I mean, I guess it makes sense, because you're paying taxes to the monarchy anyway? So they'd be just giving themselves money, but... And I mean, I think that's probably true of, like, most royal families, even today, right? Like, the British royal family doesn't pay tax, surely. Surely they're tax-exempt, they're tax -exempt, as it were. Now, Corporal Dan. All right. Stig says he should be leaving soon. There he goes. Let him get a head start. So, he's sneaking off somewhere, and we've got to figure out where he is sneaking off to. I might speed this section up, we'll see. Um, again, harder to do in post-commentary. Um, the editing is more annoying in post-commentary simply because I can't just like cut it and splice it immediately. I need to know where my commentary starts and stops as well. Um, but essentially I decided to sneak and go with just my uh, thief because Sarah is by, uh, Zoe rather. Uh, Sayola is my mage and Zoe is my thief. But she is by far the sneakiest. You can see that sight range around her. It's like two squares. She's like incredibly stealthy. No one can see her. Um, but, well, I mean, a lot of people can see her now because she's in broad daylight, but she's less likely to be seen by him if he turned around. 
Not that I think there is necessarily a discover mechanic in this side quest, but maybe there is, who knows. But as you can see here, he's just going to meet a girl. Nothing particularly interesting, it would seem. Now that's a conspiracy. It might be an angry husband. It might be worth an arrest. Shut up. That was my Discord, by the way. I apologize. There's another one. Both of those were Discords happening in the recording. You know, the stupid thing, too, is that I muted the Discord server, but that was a separate Discord server that, stupidly, I think, from memory, I'd asked a question in that separate Discord server, so people were answering my question. Like, I, can't, I really can't complain about that. Uh, <clears throat> nevertheless, I remembered to mute one Discord server, not the other. Um, I accidentally came in here because it turns out this is not where we need to go. I saw the marker for where the quest was and assumed it was through this door. It was not. I then realised that I needed to actually talk to these guards here and they just told me that Roderick isn't here. <clears throat> Roderick isn't here. There we go. Roderick's out running Roderick, an errand. He's on an errand. There we go. <laughs> My memory is relatively good. So we can't do Roderick yet, which means we may as well go to Tradson at the promenade by night time. And my decision for doing that... Oh, yeah, I talked about this. Uh, there was someone who told me in the comments that you can change the the height of your spells and stuff. Like, you can change the plane that you're on. Um, there's the button in the middle of that little compass. And also you can have... Or minimap, I guess. Um, but you can also just uh, hold shift, which goes into plane view, and then you use scroll wheel. Um, so thank you to whoever left that comment. I can't remember who it is right now. Um, but it was really helpful because I can now do spells at different heights and different planes, which is really nice. Um, there's a couple of places where that would come in really handy and I just didn't have it. I didn't know how to do it. Um, it was really stupid too because it was definitely a tool tip that taught me how to do it and I just forgot. And I was searching through like all of the, uh, the options and the keybinds and stuff and I could never find it. So I'm really glad to know how to do that now. It's going to save me a lot of trouble in fights coming coming up because being able to change the elevation of a spell, it's fantastic. Particularly things like fireball, right? Because fireball, you can shoot above people to get a smaller area on the ground if you don't want to hit your teammates and stuff like that. Like there's definitely there's a lot of uses that you can do for this. Um, I may do a cut here. I think I should be able to do a cut relatively easily here. I'm just going to wait until nightfall. I do that by taking a long rest and then a bunch of short rests. I will cut until we are back to uh, meet Tradson at the promenade. Alright, we're back. So, uh, hopefully that cut isn't too difficult to, for me to figure out. I think I'm good. Uh, <laughs> I talk like it's going to be really difficult to do this because of post-commentary. It's not that hard to edit with post-commentary. It's just slightly more annoying than when you've got it already synced. So. What have you got? In a rush, eh? All right, here. Booze. Really? Hey, you asked for it. My boss would kill me for selling new Empire liquor. This isn't illegal. Of course not. Just, you know, Imperial. Slaver stuff. Never mind. I'm a He's selling immoral liquor. <laughs> Sorry to waste your time. It's not exactly corrupt, it's just... I don't know. He thinks it will be frowned upon. Which, fair enough. <laughs> so, the only one we left now is Private Roderick. And he is back down where we expected him to be in the first place. And I'm not sure if that's just because it's night time, or whether or not that's because we did we followed every other lead first. It's possible he doesn't show up until you do every lead. That's also a possibility, I don't know. Uh, nothing. We're wasting our time. This Roderick, though. Where is he? Well, let's check again. You're Roderick. Who's asking? We're council deputies. What was that? Well, he's not just a guard, that's for sure. That's a Shadowcaster trick. He can't be far. Look for tracks.
So, gotta follow the tracks. Relatively easy to spot, in all honesty. I do wonder whether or not it's um, actually doing rolls to find this We're shit. Something here. It's possible it is. It's it also possible that it's just um, like you always find that, otherwise you might not be able to complete the quest. I don't know. Hard to say. Down into the sewers. We bring light in darkness. I do really like the way the light works in this game. It works quite nice. The only problem is slightly telling when you're in... Like, there's a, a few times where being in total darkness and dim light is not entirely clear. Or more specifically, when you're in dim light, you can't really tell whether or not you're you're actually in dim light or whether or not you're in, um, in light. Because their dim light isn't super dark because you need to be able to see, right? Like, it doesn't want to completely hide shit from you. So we see thugs here, so clearly Roderick smuggling or something similar. I say or something similar. I know what's smuggling. I played this already. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if there's anything I could really want to do there. I could have switched to like my bow instead, but I just want him as a tank there for now. I feel like this is a relatively lower level area. These guys die pretty easily. I feel like maybe you could have done this quest a lot earlier than I did it. I believe I get a well-placed fireball in here. I also test uh, moving the uh, fireball up and down. I believe, remember? I'm trying to get, seeing if I can get, there we go, <laughs> doing it on different planes. But as you can see, it's quite nice. You can actually change it to different planes, which is fantastic. Um, I can't get all of these guys in here annoyingly. I can only choose three of the four. And from memory, I go for all of the melee guys, which is Roderick in the middle and then the, uh, the two thugs down the bottom. Indeed. Good use of fireball. Although to my chagrin, they all made their saving throw. <laughs> Still 17 damage ain't bad. That's definitely above average. It's what, 36 and a half? Not bad damage. Really contemplating what to do here, and I think in the end I end up just doing Bless. I accidentally try to cast it at 3 rather than 2. Realize, then abort, and then cast it at level 2. <laughs> accidentally click, click Cure Wounds rather than Bless, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> and then finally we go back to Bless, and we go level 2, and we bless everybody. There we go. We got there in the end. <laughs> So, Bless will give a additional d4 to all of our attacks and saving throws, which makes it very, very good. Um, every attack we do is going to get a plus 4, which is just fantastic. Also, <laughs> fucking Hunter is ridiculous. It is stupid how much he has. Also, Roderick ha um, has an ability called Shadow Murder, which I mean, I assume means he gets a crit when he attacks out of stealth or something. I don't know, I wasn't really paying attention to what it did, but... It says he's ready to do high damage out of a, out of a, uh... <laughs> Once again, they rolled a 17 and they missed. That's freaking stupid. And I love it. Another victory. Also, I hit him on a 5, which is great. I'm pretty sure I burned an action surge here from memory. No, I don't. Maybe next turn. Get stabbed by the invisible man. Switching to daggers. Sneak attack, I think, kills him. Yeah, it does. Good sneak attack. 
And he'll stab at Roderick too. Like Sayola does a level 4 Scorching Ray or level 3 Scorching Ray here. I was tempted to do Wall of Fire just because level 4 spell it's fun. But it's not really an opportune place to use it so I decided instead to go for Scorching Ray. I can't remember, I think it, yeah, level 3, okay. And we just blast him with all of these. Again, harder. Five, 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 twelve. <laughs> Having that high an AC on a character is just hilariously dumb. You also notice that all of these D4s rolling above Sayola's head were like, they just felt like all of her attacks, I think. Because um, Scorching Ray does separate attack rolls for every single hit. It's like the, the bless still counting up and like showing what it actually does every time. <clears throat> I think that's how Attack of Opportunity does. Yep. <laughs> A hell of an Attack of Opportunity. I did 21 damage on the sneak attack. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Do I actually? I think I come out of this battle completely unscathed except for Zoe taking one Attack of Opportunity, which is kind of crazy. It's critical. I'll take it. I came up here because I can. It's the only reason I climb that wall is because he can. Action surge and then take a couple of shots with my bow, I believe is what I end up doing. Indeed. Ah. Run while you can. Gonna use a bow, I imagine, to take out the gun. Yep, shoot the one on the left. Then Sayola comes up and potentially finishes the job just by using magic missile. I don't know, I played this like, like a couple of days ago. I'm amazed how well I'm remembering some of this shit. It kind of just comes back to me when I uh, when I remember <laughs> remember playing it. And from memory here, I burn a fourth level spell to kill this last guy because overkill is fun. Yeah, fourth level guiding bolt. Well worth it. <laughs> Big numbers are fun. And 27 damage. <laughs> Which is like enough to like knock him out entirely. <laughs> now time to loot this place. Prime Scimitar, okay. I'm still looking for a Prime Longsword is what I really want. I really want a Prime Longsword. Because then I can use my uh, my crafting to actually craft a good uh, weapon for Hunter. Because he currently has, like, he doesn't have any good weapons. <laughs> He's still using, like, a basic ass longsword and it's not particularly good for him. And I kind of want... I just want something better, you know? Hmm? Look at that. A secret door. Luckily, my uh, my cleric is more observant than I am, having that high wisdom that he has. You can see that big secret door there that he noticed. I did not. He was still blessed, technically, so that probably helped him as well. I think it might affect ability checks as well. I can't remember. These mirrors are just cell uh, items, I believe. And then I give all the crafting components to Sayola because she's my uh, my crafting hoarder. She just carries a shitload of crafting materials with her. And then we get a handwritten note. What have you found? Enough to implicate Roderick and his friends. They were smuggling goods in and out of the temple quarter. Naughty, naughty. I believe I'm just reading the actual note. Yes. We still have not received the last supply. The clients are not as lenient as I am. We have five days to bring the goods, or we'll come and take it ourselves. Roderick. And then the secret door here, which I believe just leads to a chest. Yeah, it did.
with a bunch of copper in it, interestingly. An amethyst can be used as spell components, as well as other things. A magnificent morning star, which I forgot to check, I believe. That might still just be sitting in my inventory. Also, that's a recipe we already have, so I just dropped it back because it will get sold eventually by the treasure hoarders. Ah, uh, not treasure hoarders, what are they called? <laughs> uh, the... Shit, what are they called? The antiquarians. Treasure hoarders are like a bad guy faction in Genshin Impact. That's what treasure hoarders are. They're like the thieves The thieves in Genshin Impact are treasure hoarders. Ugh, speaking of which, I haven't played Genshin in ages. Maybe I should play Genshin. Once again, we have this long-ass loading screen to get back to the main town. The loading screens in this game are pretty good, except getting into Care Keflin. Keflin? Care Keflin. This is the only time that loading screens are like, a, like take a while to do. Anyway, we return to Stig, and I think that's pretty much the end of the episode. Um, we talk to him, get our reward, and then kind of piss fart around talking about what we're going to do next episode, but I think I can probably cut it off there, honestly. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. I'll let this uh, conversation play out, and hey, then Steve. we'll probably end the episode. I heard what happened. Roderick's a shadow caster. Roderick's a corpse. <laughs> I forgot how good that line is. Of his friends. <laughs> Take this. You can follow up and shut down his network. Oh, fantastic. Thanks for the help, my friends. Stay in the light, Stig. I do really like that line. Roderick's a shadow caster? Roderick's a corpse. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.